Hello out there in YouTube land, it's me, Ginger Dad Games. It's been a while since I've been around, uh, partly because of work, and you can sort of tell from the hairdo that uh, lockdown's not sort of over. <laughs> it's not been kind, I can't get out to the hairdresser. Um, luckily at work I am able to wear a headband to keep my mask in place. Do wear your mask if you go to Londis, please do. Uh, adhere to all the guidelines still, because we want to get out of it by the end of the year. Anyway, I'm going to do a um, little video today. I, I'm going to have to put up with a fat, sweaty nerd opening some packs of Magic the Gathering, which is what we sort of... Uh, is everywhere, isn't it? Uh, you can also see it in my glasses, which I'm not wearing, because it just... Oh wait, no, oh no, there you go. So you can see, unfortunately, the ring light and the reflection of the computer behind me, which has got Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, in, and it's sort of semi going to be the focus because it's Magic the Gathering we want to do. And we're going to open up a, I managed to get hold of just a pre-release pack for the core 2021 set. I like pre-release packs, especially in the time of lockdown, love in the time of lockdown, because I haven't been able to get out to play in actual game stores for a while. So opening one is sort of nice, isn't it? Or oh, familiar. Um, and also, I've been playing Arena a lot since the mobile app came out. Uh, which destroys my phone's battery and uh, soul, but um, you I, it's still I think you still get in pre-release packs uh, a code for six cards, uh, six packs as well, which will be useful. So I've already taken the cellophane off, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, which is here if you didn't believe me, because I didn't want to struggle on the video, but I didn't anyway. So you know, swings and roundabouts. Uh, however, so let's open. So it just <clears throat> ooh, slides out quite nicely. Um, it's nice artwork, isn't it? Magic the Gathering. I mean, I probably prefer. Oh God, I'm going to say this. I probably prefer Pokemon cards because you get a code for that pack in the online version, which obviously, at the minute, that's really useful because you're playing online a lot. A lot of people are, but the artwork in Magic the Gathering is spectacular. Not that the art in on the Pokemon cards isn't, but it's just it's Pokemon, isn't it? It's a bit cartoony and nice, which again I like, but. Just the artwork for everything about magic is a bit better. You can look, look at the little uh, circle here, it's nice. Anyway, let's open, and you still get six packs. Of it. Uh, so you got your six packs inside. You get, obviously, your um, commemorative, shall we call it, uh, card. Which Oh, okay, so I've got Fiery Emancipation, which is a six mana enchantment. That's if you a source you control will deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage instead. And obviously it's stamped for when the pre-release was. Oh my god, 27th to 28th of June 2020. I didn't realise it was that far ago. Uh, you can see that there. Um, you see it's a, I believe, Mythic Rare, that one. I've seen some of the sort of like, um, Kaldheim sets where people have pulled out ridiculous cards like a Vorinclex, uh, which is Apex Predator, which is just nuts. Uh, but these are always nice to have. Obviously, not. I don't think the thing about magic is they hold their value, don't they? And I don't think this one is massively valuable, but it is to me as a collector. Um, so obviously, you've got that in there. You've got a little cardboard separator here as well. Um, then you get the code, which I'm not going to show. Uh, it's on the back of this because in a minute I am going to put it on my arena. Sorry, everyone. We'll probably do some giveaways of codes and stuff at some point, but we aren't tonight because uh, hashtag selfish. Okay, oh, and this. Okay, oh, I've not seen one of these before. So it's about building a pre release deck, uh, mana curve, and stuff. I, openly, I am not very good at magic. I, I'm really not. I just enjoy it, and I'm moderately good at deck building at the minute in Arena, I'm hitting sort of Platinum, not quite getting to sort of the Mythic level, which if you understand Arena, um, it's, it's not bad, really, um, and this is about, I'm just I'm just bad at the balance and the synergy of cards, because I play so many card games, I struggle to understand the depth of the card library, really, the, what is available to me, especially in Standard, what the synergies that will work well together. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is, is good because uh, the, this one's got a, like a, I've seen the, this in there before, the how to build a deck, sort of how many creatures to include, how many spells, obviously that's all preference, if you're a blue player I think your deck is comprised entirely of spells, um, of instants and, and, and sorceries rather than creatures, because um, obviously they're all spells aren't they, and you play the role of a wizard using the land in front of you to, um, that's the mana to, to, use, to use the land to 
generate the mana to cast these spells, be they creatures, planeswalkers, uh, uh, sorcery stuff. There's a, there's a vast mythology to magic, which is one of its appeals. Um, and that just gives you a little insight on how to build it. Uh, a deck for a pre-release event, so you get six packs, you build a deck using those and basic lands. Uh, but on the back, actually, is a nice little history of Teferi, which I will actually read into in a bit. And we're hoping, obviously, we're hoping for a, a decent bit of, uh, like, planeswalking. We're hoping for some badass to just pop out of the box for us. You get your life counter as well in the box, which is always good. See, in Magic, you start with 20 and work your way down. These are built so you can do so, obviously, with the M21 there that you can see. Uh, working its way down to 19, uh, 18 and so on. That's always nice. I've got a lot of these, but it's always nice to have. I'm generally writing it down on paper anyway, or for Play Arena, obviously. So then, in the box, obviously we've got six packs. We've got a Chandra on there, Liliana, Tefiri himself. I always hope that you get the Planeswalker uh, inside the packet that they are printed on. Another Chandra, another Liliana. I'm going to guess another Tefiri. Okay, yeah, sweet. So... We're going to pop just these back in the box and we'll open these packs up and see what's in there. Oh, we'll pop this back in as well. We'll pop everything in apart from the code uh, and the things that are in here. And I'll probably use this to store them because what we'll do after this video is we'll just go through the cards, discuss what I think are good and why they're good. Obviously, this is an old set, but actually some of these cards, they're still in standard play and historically they'll be really useful as well. So let's start with the Shanker pack. I think Magic actually, I spoke about Pokemon Magic, a better value for money in a way. You seem to get more for your money, you get more cards in a the pack, they hold their value a bit better. Um, sort of booster boxes, uh, bundles are all a bit better value. The only thing, the Pokemon equivalent, uh, the Elite Trainer box has got over a bundle I think is you get some sleeves in there. Uh, which are quite nice as well. It would be nice to have some sleeves in a thing like this that were enough for your pre-release, but you know, then it, obviously the price gets bumped up. So. So there we go. So first, I know in Pokemon obviously as well, I know you can go and put four behind, but I don't, I like to just go through these. Um, so the token, some of the token art is really nice as well. So that's just a one, one bird token. It's really good. Uh, obviously Magic the Gathering Online, which again is basically, it's Magic the Gathering Online. It's exactly how it sounds. But um, more magic, more cards, more formats, more magic. I have actually got a secret lair of the Walking Dead ones, which ooh, mixed opinions, I know. Um, but uh, we'll put all the tokens to one side, just down here, uh, down here on the desk, because some of the ratio is not quite well uh, done for me. But um, yeah, I know they're they're a bit, aren't they? I've seen a lot of videos online, and people don't like them. But I just I really like The Walking Dead, and I really like magic, so why wouldn't I want to collect those? Um, and I completely forgot where I'm going with it. But really, it was something about artwork and this and the cracker pack. Anyway, good fun. Maybe we'll do a video for that as well. So. Let's go through um, what we've got here. We'll go here. So we can do it this way. So the tome anima. This is pretty um, usual. Can't, it's just a spirit creature. Can't be blocked. This, this turn, so we've drawn, drawn two or more cards. See if anything pops out that we'll think, um, sort of we would use to build a deck. Oh, um, village rights. There's additional cost to this spell. Sacrifice a creature. Draw two cards. Obviously, it's good for getting the working for your deck. So testing and training. Oh, actually, I've got this one already in, in online. I've used that in a, in a draft. Drafting is fun, to be fair. Um, dub. Not dub as in followed by step, the type of music. I believe it's dub as in I dub these uh, such and such. Rise, Knight of New Benalias, yeah. Uh, that's an enchant creature. Uh, so he gets 2-2, two, two, first strike, and he's a knight. So things like this, are, I think, are quite useful at pre-release events. Like, again, I don't know the card, so if you see something that you're like, oh my god, why are you not using that then? Please speak up. Um, again, another Frantic Inventory. Draw cards, and draw cards equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in your uh, graveyard. That's useful if you've got a lot, which you may not get in in a pre-release thing, so it probably wouldn't be good here. I, I, I'd, I'd go through, if this was actually at a pre-release, I'd sort out into like the piles, into the mana colours and stuff so, uh, like as a so I could sort of see what was what. Again Gale Swooper, flying creatures are always good at a pre-release like I guess bread if anyone's heard that the bombs removal efficiency uh, I can't quite remember all of the acronym I think that sort of works at a, as a pre-release as well it's mainly used for drafting but 
Revitalize, that's pretty commonly used in Arena, especially in Life Gain Index. I'm using the one that actually in Historic, because when you draw a card, you gain three life. If I've got a Johnny's Pride Mate on, I just keep pumping counters onto him. Hunter's Edge, I see a, a, a foil at the back, actually. It's not guaranteed that it'd be something great, but there you go. Hunter's Edge, again, just popping three... Uh, uh, what the hell are they called? Counters on. Spell Gold of Georgia, weird. That's gone through a few sets. I think it's in War of the Spark when I first started playing. Oh, nice. Legendary Enchantment Shine. Uh, Sanctum of Tranquil Light. That's nice. Oh, and a Sanctum of Calm Waters. Another shrine. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Law Scale Quattro. Whenever you draw a card, put a 1 1 counter on Law Scale Quattro. So, actually, you can see there that's green, blue, uh, 3 mana 2 2 creature. I think I've said all the right buzzwords there. Um, I've already noticed draw a card thing. So, obviously, that's going to get a. On your draw phase, that's going to get a counter on it all the time anyway. There's a few cards I've pulled out already that are on about drawing cards. So there's already a slight bit of synergy there for getting a creature. Uh, obviously, going to be really vulnerable to maneuver, removal. Sorry, uh, Containment Priest, Flash. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Okay. So that's like stops you bringing back from the graveyard, I guess, and from and from exile. Yeah. Uh, oh, and so there's a Bloodfell Cave there, useful, the sort of bylines. I know there's better ones out there now, new sets with like the Dark Boar, Slither Boar pathways, things like that. But I, quite, I still quite like these. Uh, and a Shiny Mountain, we've noticed. So it's a bit, it's useless to us really, but it's still nice to have for Shiny. Um, and then, so the next one, so Liliana, let's see if she brings us a bit more luck. There wasn't anything that I could see that like immediately would say, I am going to devote myself to this colour in this event. I think what, what I said what we will do is um, we'll uh, post like something on the Instagram or maybe do another video of like going through the deck and the choices we've made, like make a 40 card deck for it. So the token this time, oh, it's treasure. Sacrifice the artifact to add a minor of any colour. Very smaug, isn't it? Very Benedict Cumberpatch, who's voiced everyone now. And the remake of The Grinch wasn't so great though. So we've got a Gloom Sower. Uh, whenever it becomes blocked by a creature, it loses two life and you gain two. Okay, oh wow, okay. I mean, that is, it's seven mana, but it's an eight, six. And if people are going to block it just for the sake of not taking eight damage, it does something to them anyway. So actually, I may not be lucky enough to get like a rare or uncommon or something that's strong in that. So actually, maybe would consider keeping that at the back of your mind as a, like, a threat to build towards. Like at the top of your curve, Titanic Growth, just plus floor four. I mean, it's just an easy instant to pump a creature up. That's like green all over, isn't it? Ramp your mana up, then get a creature out there and pump it up a bit. Uh, destructive Tamper, destroy an artifact. Creatures out flying can't block. Okay, that, well, that's quite useful. If people are going to play flyers. I guess maybe you could sideboard it sort of thing. Capture Sphere, oh yes, I like this. Although it's four mana, it's got flash. It can be cast as an instant, basically. Enchant a creature. And then they tap the enchanted creature. Basically, just it it, it captures us someone in a sphere. <laughs> like, but obviously, really useful for it's a room. It's a removal spell, isn't it? Uh, really useful removal. Crippler enters the battlefield. You may sacrifice a creature or discard a creature card. And if you do, you get a draw a card. So, and there's not much synergy with the uh, quattle I had before, but there you go. There's something. Uh, Colossal Dreadmore. I mean. That's going to be one of the more persistent, recognisable magic cards, the Colossal Dreadmoor. It's 6-6 six, six for 6 mana. Again, you pair that with Titanic Grove, you've got a 10-10 ten, ten coming in, and like if, yeah, but that hurts, that's half your starting life. Bazzy's Acolyte, life linked, obviously that gives you life back, that's good for life gain index. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to put a plus one one counter on two other target creatures you control. Though, so that is actually quite useful, although it's four mana. Sky scanner, never seen that before, but drawing a card. So I think it's it's also just it's a colorless artifact. Brilliant for that quattle, really. Prowess. If you catch, uh, so it's flying for three, but um, when you cast a non-creature spell. This creature gets plus one one till the end of the turn so you can just go over the top and you can play removal to get rid of something that will block it or something to draw a card or something you know any any non-creature spell where you, you just through non-creature spell also planeswalkers if you put that down i forget that they aren't uh creature spells just a pretty simple soldier i mean 
um, wouldn't use that unless I was like desperate to sort of fill out for some one drops to start the game off in white. Carrying Grub, so Carrier, okay, I've not seen this before. Carrying Grub gets plus X plus zero, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. When Carrying Grub enters the battlefield, mill four cards. Okay, so there is a definite little bit of synergy with the Gloom Sower there. Like, obviously, you might struggle to play the Gloom Sower for that much mana, but you've got a four mana option here. If you've got that in and you mill it out or it's already in your graveyard and been removed, then um, you've got an 8-5 for four mana there, so that's actually quite that's a useful option, like a sidestepping option. Liliana's Devotee, it's just buff, buff zombies, really. Experimental Overload, okay, that's good, and it still gets a lot of play. Obviously, it's created an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So blue, red players, sort of like ag ag aggro players, I guess. Um, then you can get an instant or sorcery card back, and then you exile this card. But actually, when I'm just trying to play for, like, you know, uh, on arena, oh, because 20, to 20 spells are blue or red, I generally play the blue or red just prefab deck, and that comes up, and it's actually won some games. Um, Animal Sanctuary, oh, okay, so we've got a rare land, not doing so great with the rares, but you can, two, you, for two, two and tap the land, put a plus one, one counter on a bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. So actually, that land, got a plus one, one counter, so, for if we look in the previous one, that we already started to think, oh, that might work. Uh, we've not got the best choice yet, but so I've drawn a card, and it's that card, and it's a three three. Then I've managed to tap that land, and I put another one. It's a, it's a four four. You see where I'm going? So it's still really vulnerable to removal. But if I've managed to get some counter spells out of the um, remainder of the packs, and actually blue green would be moderately sensible. Maybe splashing to black for that sort of. Creature. Uh, the Tefiri one now, almost halfway through guys, thank you so much, uh, if I've not already said it please do like and subscribe, I'll make fancy little buttons as soon as I manage to get a bit better stuff on the car, I've got a decent computer now, it's just getting the stuff on it and getting my head around it and finding the time with being a dad and a full time this. Um, okay so what's the token this time, oh nice little soldier, got soul but I'm not a soldier, she looks pretty cool. Um, Okay, so a Hubble Fiend straight away, a devil creature who is red and probably would fit into aggro because it's got trample. And you can sacrifice other creatures to get a 1-1 one -one on. It would fit in a thingy. Okay, all right, there you go. So Library Larcenist. Whenever Library Larcenist attacks, draw a card. Again, you can sort of already see that synergy coming up with the Quattle from before because uh, you just keep pumping that up again. Really vulnerable to removal though, so it's a pretty sketchy thing to do a pre-release. There's probably better tactics. Uh, Infernal Scar and Enchant Creature, you get draw a card from it to re uh, air, it's not bad. Death Bloom Flag, it's valid, still gets a lot of play in sort of token decks, because when it dies, it creates a 1 1 creature token. So, like, you can, it's a 3 2, it's not great, but you can block and like you get another sort of token to block with afterwards. Ranger's Guile, target creature gets 1-1 one, one and Hexproof, that's quite useful if we would go green-blue. Oh nice, Land of War Visionary, when it enters the battlefield draw a card, so already you can see what I'm going to say about putting a plus 1-1 one, one counter on a massive snake. Uh, and also, uh, it ramps, tap it for uh, Forest Mana, beautiful. Um, oh okay, alright oh, it's one of the sort of showcase frames, Chandra's Magmut. Uh, you can tap, oh wow, there's that aggro, two, two mana, and then you can tap it to deal one damage to a target player or planeswalker, so that's on the field, and if they can remove it, it's just going to be a bit of a threat in red aggro decks. And that's common as well, I, I feel like that is pretty useful for a common. Daybreak Charger, Unicorn, when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero until the end of the turn, um, that's pretty useful. Prison Might. That's just, you could probably fit that in for ramping, but you've got to pay two to add one mana of any colour, so it doesn't quite work. A, a prop, that would just get dropped at easy. Selfless Saviour, oh yes, a nice little dog. Look at him happy, he's got a hat on. He's probably found it in the local shop, not TK Maxx, others are available. Miscast, okay, so there we go, there's a counter. Uh, counter, instant or sorcery spell, unless it's controller pays three. That, like, early, for one mana early on, that's quite useful to stop some removal shocks and things. Shipwreck, Dowser, 
a Murpho Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's quite useful. So actually you're getting some good blue cards that would fit in quite well. Scavenging Ooze. There's that. I'm going to really focus on this one. For It's a 2-drop two, two drop for 2-2. Two, two. And egg, to be pay Forest Mana, and you exile a target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and you gain a life. So that's quite useful to just, like, your stuff's in the graveyard, just exile it. And then we've got another shiny in there, the Thrill of Possibility. Uh, you've got to discard a card where you get to draw two cards. Mm, it's all right. Oh, and they're nice. Like a nice little showcase land. I quite like that, actually. Well, they're, they're like just nice cards, but we haven't got anything specifically like <coughs> blowing my socks off yet. Holding on for a mythic planeswalker. I'm not bothered with which. Okay, so. Uh, oh, yeah. A sapling that goes with the death bloom phthalate. That's quite nice to have that token. Sure Strike. Just a two drop. For aggros, really, to pump the creatures up a bit. Lofty Denial. Another counter, I think. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one. If you control a creature with flying, counter that spell unless its controller pays, pays four. So it'd be worth doing that and putting a blue sort of flying creature in. I think blue-green is probably where I'm going to go best with this because it would just be really annoying. And you'd have, but I am having to rely on the Quattle to do the most damage. Uh, Sanguine Indulgence. Yeah, there, just a sort of standard one of the mill car pri common pride marking. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one one counter on a target creature you control. Anyone think, oh, cool. Okay, each creature you control with a plus one one counter on it has trample. So, if, like, if I've got up to 10 tokens on that sneak or anything else, that's just gonna, even if it's they've got to really block it, otherwise, I'm just gonna go through. And I kick Oh, oh no, oh no, I dropped one. Okay, nice. Yeah, just a biggish creature for three mana. Wall of Runes, I like that. It's a scry. It defends easily. It probably would go in the deck. Sabretooth Mauler. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one one counter on Sabretooth Mauler and untap it. Okay, so for four mana, that's quite good to have on the field, I, I guess. Valorous Steed. Create a 2-2 two, two white creature token with Vigilance when it enters the battlefield. And it's Vigilant as well, so it doesn't untap. Sorry, it doesn't tap. Uh, when you attack, going to Chlorister, it's a lifelink white thing. Uh, Mithril Singer, flying prowess. This, if we if we are gonna go blue green, it's gonna find its way in, isn't it? Heart fire emulator. And sort of make aggro at pre-release, and I'd put that in. Basri Solidarity. Okay, so put a plus one one counter on each creature you control. That would be useful. Maybe consider popping a bit of white in for that, but. Just have just one in. Oh, I've got ahead of myself. Okay. Volcanic gazes. So that's just that's basically just removal. For yeah, if you've got enough mana on it, can do enough damage. Garrick's harbing. Okay. This would pretty much seal it for me that I go green blue at the minute. It's a creature for three mana. It's a four three, which is quite good. It hexproof from black, so some of the nastier like sort of removal spells. I bet you murders in someone's pack somewhere at the event, wouldn't it? Garrick's Harboring deals combat damage. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, look at that many cards from the top of your library. Reel a creature card or Garrick planeswalker card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So that is useful because you're getting things into your hand. If I've got a Garrick planeswalker, it's boom. Okay, so we'll come up to the last few packs. Thanks for being with me. And the poor part of the video again, like I say, I'll make it up to you. But if you do just like, spread the word, um, do all that jazz, then um, it helps me out because I'll be able to put things back into the stream. And it, like it's sort of a mental health release for me as well. Something separate from work and everything. And uh, thank, homeschooling's finished, thank God. I haven't even done the bulk of it and it's already like... Um, okay, so an angel token this time, quite nice. Again, the token art is, is nice. Uh, Fetid Imp. What a horrible sounding card name. Snare Spinner. Okay, just a, a spider of reach. That would probably be a useful inclusion in the end for um, blocking flying creatures that would end up in decks. Goblin Arsonist. 
when it dies, deals a damage, it's a one drop, one one, it's an, in an aggro deck because it does damage on the way out too. Keen Glide Master. So that it's not so efficient because it's not flying straight away. You have to pay more honor for it, but see what other options we've got. Village Rights has already come up for us. Portcullis Vine, Defender. Okay, sacrifice a creature with defender, draw a card. That might work quite well if you put Wall of Runes on, sacrifice it, get another card out of it, especially so it's quite useful. Warded Battlements, another wall creature. There's lots of walls in this in this set, isn't there? Shocking. <laughs> the Sky Scanner, draw a card. You maybe put that in because it's a 1 1, but like you get to draw the card, so in, in theory, I'm just pumping up the Quattle with it, really. Again, Probably an awful tactic. I'm relying on one card to win. I'm like Yu-Gi-Oh! Who believes in the heart of the cards. Okay, nice. Unsubstantiate. Return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. So just getting, for me, kind of spells are... I know people hate them, but they're just good for protecting yourself. Um, Seed Striker. That seems quite good. Double Strike. So it deals with first strike and regular combat damage. So it's good for getting rid of Death Touch. Although I don't know if there's much Death Touch in this set. Whenever Sea Striker attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. And he gets plus one, plus one for each of them. Okay, so you can make that quite big. I mean, why? It generally goes wide, doesn't it, with tokens and stuff, so you could tap all them. Fungal Rebirth. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two one one sapling creature tokens. Okay, so you're just getting a bit wider. Peer into the abyss. That's really creepy artwork, but really, like, you can't look away. Draw cards equal to half your life, equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their li life round up each time. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, you could do that to yourself. Suck, but, like, to get rid of your health, but if you've, you've got, like, all them cards in your hand. Uh, Minus card, Craig. Okay, so we've not got the best cards yet. We're on to the last pack. And the token is 3-3 three, three Beast, which I think Garrick makes. It'd be nice if there was a Garrick in here, wouldn't there? Legion's Judgment, destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. That's good white removal. I didn't know white removal really existed, but clearly it does. A bone pit root menace, it can't be blocked. They're quite menace creatures are quite good in pre release, I think. Obviously, because you've not got that time to sort of build your building, you're spinning on the dime, aren't you? And you're having to come up with something. Ah, uh, Vodalian Arcanist, that would be quite useful because you tap it and you can cast use that mana to so it's semi ramp, but you can only use it on instant or sorcery spells. So you can see that there. And if it's going to switch focus or not, but well, there you go. Cage Zombie. So for two mana and tapping this, each opponent loses two life. Activate the ability of a creature died this turn. It's not that useful. It's a specific set of circumstances, isn't it? I'll track down. That looks. It looks quite good. Scry three, which I like. Uh, they reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature or land card, draw a card. So you could scry three. You could make that work for you. Like you reveal it, then you just draw that into your hand. So it's good for getting land in your hand if you're struggling. Uh, it's good to get. It. The creature maybe you're looking for is good search. Frost Breath, I like. Tap your creatures, they don't untap in the next turn. I hate it when that gets used on me in Arena, but there you go. Skelly Bob Archer, when it enters the battlefield, deal one damage to any target. It's pretty, it's just a useful card. Another Revitalize, there's no reason to not include it. Uh, Warded Battlements, a Defender. Again, I think we've had that too. Another Wall, Balls to the Walls. Ah, the Sanctum of Shattered Heights. I feel like this is very Avatar, The Last Airbender, sort of, with all the shrines. Um, we've got the two of the other shrines in here, so that's fine. The Witch's Cauldron. Sacrifice creature, gain life, draw a card. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Ah, oh, it's black. I thought it was going to be a colourless artifact. Again, that, that's drawing a card. I was just thinking for the Quattro, but it's not that useful. Skyway Sniper, a reach, a one drop, one two creature, and you can deal damage to creatures with flying for spending a bit of mana, so that might be useful. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we've done terrible. I just got carried away and looked. 
uh, pack leader. It's a dog. All the dogs you control get 1-1 one, one. whenever pack leader attacks. Prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn to dogs you control. That's quite useful. If you've got a lot of dogs. Also in the background, what I noticed and what I was really hoping to be a Garrick, but it's not, is a nice little cultivate which is getting land into your hand. It's very nice artwork though. I mean, you must admit. And that is all the packs. Just a nice little sort of uh, showcase art, I guess, there on the place. So, yeah, looking at it, it would probably be blue green. But I'd have to, I'm going to re go through all these cards uh, and see. I don't think there's any sort of standout cards to highlight, uh, which is thinking what the, the law scale quattle is, would sort of be what I would look to build around. It's not the best, but we haven't had the best selection here, I don't feel. There's good cards in here, but there's good cards in here that would fit into different tactics. You could also run in the green, like the sort of green blue, the Colossal Dread War as well at the end. Uh, we've got a few flyers in there uh, that would be really useful. And then we've just got some sort of enough creatures to buff out a bit of sort of ramping as well to get to that easier. The scavenging ooze just to add a bit of value in. Um, I'd probably put that land in because it's sexy. So when you put it down, they'd be like, Oof, where'd you get that from? I like, just, just opened it, mate. Just opened it. Um, but yeah, I think so. I mean, there's some stuff. And that other thing between the Garrick Harvinger, that was, that's going to be, that's also be pretty useful inclusion. Uh, Saber Tooth Maul, they, there's just some decent cards, you, like the curve is already almost built in for us anyway. And again, playing the blue, so a um, bit of removal and stuff in there too. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for maybe me just having a little look through these, a little think of what we're going to do with them. And making like a 40 card example deck of what I can do. So then you can put in the comments, oh my god, that's awful. How do you ever win a game of magic? And to tell you the truth, I very rarely win a game of magic, apart from because of the new Kaldheim set and my wild cards on Arena, making a deck around Finn the Fangbearer that is poisoning the living daylights out of people. And unfortunately, I've got a really good mill deck for Historic as well. I know, I'm sorry. My mum sits over me because of it, but you know, I like I like blue magic. Um, not blue, like mm, bits of blue. Anyway, that's been it. Thanks for tuning in. Like I say, please do get in touch and let us know how you let me. I say us, but it's just me and the, the poor missus who I bother with all the time with all this stuff. Um, get in touch, just uh, comment, like, share the video around. There's an email if you want to get in touch. Uh, Instagram, it's it's all about. It's always all in the video. It's on. Obviously, there's YouTube, which is hopefully where you found us. Anyway, peace out. Um, have fun playing magic. Please do abide by the rules. I, I'm not just saying it because, oh, I'm online and I feel like I should. I, I'm a nurse. I work in the hospital. I know how bad it's been. And you can't comment on how terrible it's been until you've been in that environment and seen how much patients and the staff are struggling. But there's hope now. So let's focus on that. And... Um, yeah, and enjoy your games and online and just really look forward to being with your friends uh, when you are allowed. In the meantime, if you think of anything you want me to sort of showcase, then let me know and uh, or try. Um, but keep your mind, keep your mind, keep your mind on the prize. Keep your eyes focused uh, on this channel for sort of future MTG content and other stuff as well. Because I like a bit of everything, so I'll do a bit of everything. And also streams will be starting regularly again soon. Anyway, take care guys. It's been lovely to see you. Peace.